Sometimes children kill. They go into schools and shoot their classmates. Others murder their own family. It's a shocking and sad reality, but tonight, some hope. A New Mexico scientist studied the brains of homicidal boys, and what he found could help save lives. Royal Day has this special report. It calls like this. I, I was so over my head. I shot him in the back of the head. Never happened. Or if we never saw crowds of kids running to safety. I saw three kids just fall from the table. And frantic parents desperate to know if their son or daughter is alive. My son had called me up and and you know, right as it right after it happens, his dad, dad, please come get me. There's there's been a shooting. The world would just be a better place. I looked back up and I saw he was trying to reload his gun. But that is not our reality. Children are killing other children, their own parents or strangers, and we all struggle to understand it. This New Mexico scientist believes he can help. Their brains are quite different. Dr. Kent Keel uses neuroscience at the Mind Research Network in Albuquerque to study the most violent criminals. He's collected data from 150 maximum security troubled New Mexico boys. Part of that research included a very comprehensive MRI exam totally safe and non-invasive. This is where those boys got their MRIs. This is a mobile unit that was driven to a juvenile detention facility in Albuquerque. Keel's team compared the brain density of the boys locked up for a variety of crimes to the boys who were there because they had killed. They're very different. They're, they're strikingly different. The gray matter in the brains of the homicidal children wasn't as dense. Gray matter helps control impulse and reaction. The thicker it is, the better. It appeared the brains of these boys who'd killed weren't as developed as they should be. Dr. Keel determined this. They are a very, very, very high risk for this type of very poor impulsive homicidal behavior. The data was staggering. In fact, if we asked a computer algorithm to try to classify homicide versus non-homicide, it got 85% correct, which is really, really, really amazing. The next step, to figure out how to use this information to help. Develop treatments that help to improve the structure, improve the density. So, Dr. Keel began working with the state of Wisconsin, which has a rehabilitation program for troubled boys, some who have killed. They treat them with positive reinforcement techniques to try and help them learn control. So after a year of treatment, the boys that complete that treatment, they have a 50% chance, less likely chance that they're going to reoffend violently in a, in a four-year follow-up than the boys who don't get that treatment. Dr. Keel is mapping the brains of boys who go through this program to see as they get treatment if they're literally changing, building up brain muscle, density, that will help them make better choices. We do believe it's the case, and, yeah. and we do have some preliminary evidence of 25 boys that have been scanned uh, before and after uh, or during treatment, and we do see changes in, in both the function of the brain um, and in the structure of the brain in very important brain regions that we, we know are important for reoffending. Scientists are getting a bigger sample of these children right now. This type of program was just adopted by the state of Georgia, and Dr. Keel hopes one day New Mexico will try it too. He believes this is some of the most promising insight into understanding why some children kill, and better yet, how to help them. It's vital new information at a time when school leaders, parents, judges, the community watch situations like this in horror, desperate to find out why. We're going to keep keep after it and to try to help you know reduce the chances that those things ever happen. And desperate to stop it. In Albuquerque. I'm Royal Day, KOAT, Action 7 News. Keel would like to find a way for troubled kids to be identified so their brains could be scanned if they show low gray matter density. He says they need positive reinforcement before anything horrible happens. His work is published in the book, The Psychopath Whisperer. Several flights at the Albuquerque Sunport are disappearing after a